Welcome back uh, to the discussion on the online configuration in OpenLDAP. In the last couple of segments, we talked about what an overlay is, what is the role of overlay in OpenLDAP, and we did a static modification. Uh, when I say static, what I meant to say is we modified the slab d.conf file uh, for adding an overlay, which was audit log overlay, and that required a restart of the OpenLDAP server, which sometimes is not acceptable. So in the second segment, we talked about a facility that came up from 2.3 version of the OpenLDAP onwards, wherein we were able to change the uh, configuration of OpenLDAP dynamically by modifying a suffix called cn is equal to config. So if you look at the whiteboard here, you can see that there is a suffix cn is equal to config, which we created by modifying the uh, etc OpenLDAP slapd.conf and then there was a cn is equal to schema branch and then there was a cn is equal to uh, x database if you remember what it was when we started the conversation in the segment last time it had one followed by bdb and that belonged to a suffix dc is equal to fedg comma dc is equal to com there was only one database when we started that discussion so the idea was to use this suffix cn is equal to config to make dynamic modification to the OpenLDAP behavior. So if I wanted to add a database, which is what we did in the previous segment, all I had to do was to run an LDAP modify command on the cn is equal to config specifying appropriate details like what is the suffix of my database, what is the directory of my database, of course before which we created the directory of that database and changed the ownership of the directory to someone who could write to that directory. And finally, uh, this is what we got in the previous segment. We have a branch cn is equal to config which is the suffix that holds the data that is changed dynamically in the OpenLDAP. It has branches like cn is equal to schema. Of course, there are other branches also. For the sake of clarity and simplicity, I have omitted most of those branches that exist under the cn is equal to config. When we started the last segment, there was only one database and hence the number one here, followed by what was the backend uh, that we used for that database. You would remember there are other options also. I used BDB, Berkeley DB, but if you intend to use some other database like MDB or uh, LDIF or NDB, you could go ahead and do that. Uh, but since the discussion uh, is simple, is kept simple, I used the uh, default one, which is the BDB. And then the suffix, for that database which was the only suffix or only database that existed when we started the previous segment. But towards the end of the segment what we did was we ran an LDAP modify command on the cn is equal to config branch with a dn to bdb that is the second database and then we specified the suffix of that second database as cn is equal to log. So as a result of that as of now what we have is uh, uh, cn is equal to config branch with two databases or in other words in my site in my machine there are two databases one with the suffix dc is equal to fedg comma dc is equal to com the second one with the suffix cn is equal to config now this blank rectangle here is what we intend to fill in this segment i want to add an overlay and you remember adding an overlay to a database from the first segment was by using a uh, some uh, some lines in the slapd.conf file. It was like overlay, what kind of overlay I want, add uh, audit log and then specify the path of the audit log file in the slapd.conf but I had to restart the server after that. In this segment, we will add an overlay. This time maybe we will add access log and possibly in the next segment, we will add an audit log overlay. Uh, but this time, when I am adding the access log overlay, I am not going to do that in the slabd.conf file. I am going to plug that right under the dc is equal to fetch comma, dc is equal to com branch by using the ldap modify command. Now, uh, please do not overlook the simplicity of what I try to do here. This achieves a, a big purpose. When I do something like this, I am literally plugging in an overlay for access log file without having to restart the OpenLDAP server, which of course would not have been possible if I added this overlay as a part of this labd.conf file. So online configuration helps us achieve configuration changes dynamically, that is without a restart. 
So all I'm doing going to do in this segment is to run the LDAP modify command on the CN is equal to config branch which we created in the last segment and onto the database uh, which is fedg comma dc is equal to com. I'm going to plug in uh, this is going to be my overlay this is going to be my access log overlay so let me write that down here access log overlay I'm going to add that access log overlay and what is the idea of using the uh, log here why do I have a log because the access log would finally be published to the CN is equal to log database um, I'm going to write my access log to CN is equal to log that is why we created CN is equal to log branch so if people bind to the open LDAP server unbind from the open LDAP server read something in the open LDAP or write something onto the open LDAP all of that is going to be captured by the access log if I plug in the access log overlay to the database DC is equal to fedg comma DC is equal to com and from where do I get this access log from where can I read this access log? The access log is going to be published to the CN is equal to log database. That is how we are going to configure it. So that if you query CN is equal to log suffix, you will be able to view the access log there. So that's the idea in this segment. All I'm going to do is to run an LDAP modify command to add a new entry into the CN is equal to config branch. But the new entry is going to be added under the DC is equal to FedG, comma DC is equal to com branch. That's going to be an overlay of access log. And uh, access logs are going to be published to the CN is equal to log branch in the uh, CN is equal to config. So let's do it. And that would give us a good picture about the dynamic uh, configuration of an overlay access log. And possibly in the next segment, we will talk about how to dynamically configure an overlay, which is an audit log overlay onto the database. So let's uh, run the LDAP modify command minus D. I have to authenticate as admin. You remember from the previous segment that uh, we created the uh, root DN as CN is equal to admin comma CN is equal to config and then the password also if you remember looks like I have to use minus D here CN is equal to admin uh, comma CN is equal to config and then I would have to use the password secret that's the password that we set with the E and now I'm going to say uh, DN What's the, what is it that I want? I want OLC overlay. In fact, uh, most of these attributes that we use during the dynamic reconfiguration, if you remember, is prefixed with the word OLC. OLC database config, OLC database. These were some of the terms that we came across in the previous example. In case if you are not able to remember the previous example, you might want to go back to that video and watch how we created a database dynamically by modifying CN is equal to config branch. So I'm using DN uh, is OLC overlay and I'm going to give it a name one access one access log because I might want to create access log for multiple databases. So I may want to number this access log one access log for possibly the first database which is DC is equal to FedG comma DC is equal to com and then where do I want it? I want it uh, to be created on for the OLC uh, database. Uh, one BDB that is where I want it now if you want you can go back to the Webex here uh, if you look at the position of the uh, DN the DN is positioned here right on the OLC database one BDB so the that, that's exactly what is reflected in here um, overlay is equal to uh, so this is going to be OLC database is equal to one BDB and then I would specify that is on the I mean on top of that is the CN is equal to config branch maybe we want to switch that there so you can see that uh, so we are just like what we used to refer to in the earlier examples we are navigating all the way back up to the suffix here so this is what we are trying to create this is what we are trying to add this is our new entry and that entry is going to be under one BDB OLC database CN is equal to config which is exactly what you get to see here and then uh, what is it I'm going to add that's what I'm going to do change type is going to be add uh, object class there are a couple of object class that I need to add OLC overlay config I think this is something you will get to see and then one more object class which is OLC access uh, log config of course if you are uh, 
using audit log it is going to be olc audit log config so these are the two object classes which defines the set of attributes i think uh, the pattern is very familiar to you all you're doing is to add a new entry into a dit in the openl dab only thing is this time we are adding not an identity but an overlay uh, entry and that's why the object class is not person but the object class is something else and for these object classes there are some attributes the attribute number one is what is the overlay that you are adding i would say olc uh, access log that's the one which i'm adding olc access log is the uh, maybe we, we 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 might want to give it a number one access log that's what i'm adding here uh, the idea of this numbering scheme is that i might want to create an overlay access log for access log overlay for another database maybe i'll number it as two for the second database number it as three for the data, third database so on and so forth so that's done now where do you want to log access log db what is the access log db so if you go back to the webex here i told you earlier that the access log i want to log all the access information to cn is equal to log we have to create this up front if you don't do it uh, this is going to give us an error and of course you would remember in the previous segment we did create cn is equal to log file so let's cn is equal to log database so uh, the db that i want to use for logging is cn is equal to log and then finally i need to specify what do i want to log and i do that by using olc access log operations there are many options you have you can only log read operations you can log only the write operations you can log the bind operations right unbind operation or you can specify uh, all which would actually include bind unbind read write everything so if you look at this uh, one piece of ldif format uh, all i'm doing is i'm adding a new entry and the new entry is olc overlay with a numbering scheme one access log and i think it's very clear where i'm plugging it in i'm plugging it in in the first database under the cn is equal to config branch what am i doing i'm adding this entry into the existing dit there are a couple of object classes which i need to specify that i've done these are the object classes that defines attributes like what kind of overlay is this is it access log or is it audit log or is it something else so very clearly it's access log what is the db what is the database to which your logs would be published and here you have mentioned the cn is in the log remember this is a database we have created up front in the previous segment and then finally what kind of operations would you like to log is it all or read or write so uh, since this is a demonstration let's be very liberal about it so i have used all so that we get to see just about everything in the cn is equal to config branch so looks like uh, i haven't made a typo here let's see i mean i'll get to know that once i hit enter twice now that was a miracle there because it went through just fine we have added a new entry i can safely plus control c and do an ldap search operation on my config branch remember config branch if you go back to the webex would now display this uh, entry as well let's verify that by running the ldap search command you hit the ldap search now that's quite a bit of information at the end you can see there are two databases but then you can see there is also an overlay information uh, that is meant for the database number 1 which is nothing but dc is equal to fedg comma dc is equal to com let's clear the screen and do an ldap search operation ldap search uh, minus b uh, where am i searching i'm searching under the database cn is equal to log for what uh, for everything i mean whatever entry it has and by the way uh, just in case if you wonder why i am not authenticating myself you would remember if i do not specify an access control instruction anyone can read anything in the openl tab not a secure way of doing it maybe in the subsequent discussion we will have uh, talks about how you can define an access control instruction in openl tab so that you can restrict the access to the entries in the openl tab server but for now you know everything can be read by anyone so an anonymous read activity is being uh, is is happening now Uh, when i run this command i don't get much of an information if you see there is only one small entry that says yes i am cn is equal to log that's it it's an audit container that's all it says it doesn't say anything more than that because i haven't accessed dc is equal to fedg comma dc is equal to com any time after i configured my cn is equal to log as the database for access log 
So let's perform some operation on the uh, C DC is equal to fed G comma DC is equal to com. Once I perform the operation, let's see if the CN is equal to log database gets populated. If things have gone fine, then it will be populated. Let's do an LDAP search operation using the uh, manager DC is equal to fed G comma DC is equal to com. Again, all of this is void because I can safely run the LDAP search command without uh, supplying the user information it should work because there is no access control instruction in place and the default access control instruction is to let anyone read anything in the open LDAP server so minus w secret and then I would specify of course the base dn from there do you want to start the search that's dc is equal to fed g dc is equal to com and I want to get to see all the entries which is why I specify object class is equal to star that means fetch me all entries which has the attribute object class let's do this I've got some output here which actually means that my binding operation took place. Uh, I was able to bind as manager dc is equal to fed g comma dc is equal to com. My bind was successful. I performed a search operation on the uh, dc is equal to fed g comma dc is equal to com and then finally I unbound from the open LDAP. So all this would have been logged. Now let me clear the screen and then uh, remind you last time I ran this command it gave me only a very very small output smallest to the output that you would have ever seen on the LDAP server. Now let's see what has happened. Now you can see that there has been some logs populated in this. So you could see that you know there were uh, bind that took place and all that. Uh, you could see the bind operation there. Uh, what was the result of the bind and what was the method of binding and then it is also indicating to us what kind of uh, uh, what kind of operation was performed it was a search operation so all of these details are in fact logged into the audit log what is very important here is to keep in mind that even though we modified the behavior of the LDAP server by adding the facility of access log we didn't have to restart the open LDAP server all of this was made possible by online configuration all we had to do was add an entry for the access log overlay under the database of our interest in the CN is equal to config branch and we could do that by following the same old pattern of the LDAP modify command and bingo it worked for us we are able to see the access log which is in fact a very important measure that people take for security reasons so if you have understood this uh, I think you can go ahead and try this on your system as well just to get a feel of how you could perform online configuration and then come back for the next segment where we will do the same thing I mean it'll, it's going to be a short segment we will do the same thing but this time around uh, we will be using audit log instead of access log so that we get to see how we can configure audit log as well on the fly by modifying the OLC so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon for the audit log overlay configuration uh, using OLC method